Hey students and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to talk about balancing chemical reactions. Uh, please take some time to get the header filled in on your note packet. Section 3, this is balancing chemical reactions. This is page 3. Today's essential question, what we're going to be thinking about as we work through this is how can we balance chemical reactions to satisfy the law of conservation of mass? So let's just jump right in. And basically what we're going to start with is what is the law of conservation of mass? The law of conservation of mass basically states, um, excuse me, totally lost my train of thought, that the mass at the beginning of the reaction equals the mass at the end of the reaction. Okay, so what we're saying is however much I had at the beginning of the reaction is however much I'm going to end with. That also says that I can't just lose an element somewhere in um, the reaction. So if I have carbon at the beginning of the reaction, I'm going to have carbon in some form at the end of the reaction. So that's something that we need to take into consideration. Now, our next and last piece of vocab is coefficients. Coefficients are those big numbers out front. Big numbers in front of substances. They represent moles. And they are used to balance chemical equations. So they are what we use to balance chemical equations. And we're going to get more into that in just a few minutes. So here we go. Let's talk about a real life situation. All right, we're going to start off with um, a very simple one that's real life. Hopefully you've made a grilled cheese sandwich before. If not, well, you're in for a treat. They're delicious. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a grilled cheese sandwich. But we're going to kind of write out the recipe for it. So what do I need? I need bread. All right. I need some bread. I need cheese, and I probably need like some butter to cook it on, or mayo, kind of depending on what you want to do, right, because we're making it grilled, all right? That's going to make a grilled cheese. Now, this is our overall kind of, we can say like a reaction, because reactions are really technically recipes, all right? But is this balanced? Not yet, right? So... I need like two slices of bread, right? One for top, one for bottom. And I'm going to go cheap. I need like one slice of cheese. I'll make it a thick one. Velveeta's the best, right? So we've got one slice of cheese. And then we're going to go some butter, right? But not like a lot of butter. I don't need like one cup of butter. I need like maybe like a fourth of butter or something along those lines. And now it's balanced. Okay? And this is going to make one delicious grilled cheese. All right. No, we're not putting ham on it. All right. So that is what we did. We went back and balanced it because we needed two slices of bread to make one grilled cheese. I couldn't just have one slice of bread and make a grilled cheese because, I mean, I guess if I did a half, that would work. But I'm trying to make a full grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. So we must use, so our rules for balancing, we're going to start off here. The most important one is we're going to always use coefficients to balance. We've got to use coefficients to balance. We will never, ever, ever, ever change our subscripts. Remember, subscripts are those little numbers that are beside the number. All right, beside the substance. We're not talking about little numbers that we're changing. We're only going to put numbers out front. Only numbers out front. Our next rule that is very important, if we have no coefficient written out front, it is understood to be 1. A lot of times we don't write the 1 because, well, gosh darn it, when we're balancing a 100 equation, it makes it a little difficult and a lot of work. So we're going to leave that one out sometimes. Okay? Last one is coefficients should be in their lowest form. So if we can reduce 
We need to. So if we can take a two out of everything, we need to reduce, all right? So if we need to reduce, do so. We want it in their lowest common, lowest common denominator, or whatever you want to call it, okay? All right, now that's the major rules. I've got some helpful hints. I've been teaching Kim for a while. So let's talk about some helpful hints. First off, my suggestion is that we save carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen for last. That is because they appear all the time and they're kind of somewhat hard to balance if you start with them. So we're gonna save them for last. Save carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen for last, okay? Next up, we're gonna think of water. Water can be balanced as HOH, because sometimes we'll want to balance that as like a separate H and an OH, or as H2O. Kind of look at how it goes. So we can balance the water as HOH, like let's say there's a hydroxide on the other side and we want to balance it that way, or we can balance it as H2O, like if we go back to the beginning or our bell work today, and when we had that one written up, okay? This kind of goes with that one. If a polyatomic ion stays together on both sides of the reaction, we're gonna balance it as one item. And we will see all of these in our examples that are upcoming, so if you don't really understand what one means, hold on a second, okay? And then last but not least, if you get in trouble, we can always double because sometimes doubling helps us kind of get our balancing going and you can always reduce it out to get back to our lowest common form, okay? So that's what we've got going. So our rules, step one, only change coefficients, right? Um, if no coefficients written, that's a one. Coefficients should be the lowest form so we can reduce if we need to. Save carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen for last. Think of water sometimes as HOH or H2O. The polyatomic ion stays together, balances one. And if we get in trouble, let's go ahead and double. So here we go. Let's jump time to this first one and kind of keep those rules in mind. We're looking at K plus oxygen gives us potassium oxide. So how we do this, so this is really trial and error, and that is kind of sometimes what uh, makes it challenging for us because we're not so much into the trial and error. All right, but this is all about trial and error. You just try something, see if it works. If it doesn't, try again. So here we go. We're going to look. K first. All right, so we have 1K there, 2Ks there. 1K on the reactant side, 2Ks on the product side. So I need 2Ks to balance out the K on the product side. Everybody down with that? Now let's go to the oxygen. Currently I have two oxygens on the product side, or reactant side and only one on the reactant side. So I have to put a two there. But Ms. Griffith, what happened here? Now I have four Ks because two times two is cat is two times two is four. So now I'm going to erase that two and make that a four. And now if we look at it, we have four Ks on the reactant side, four Ks on the product side, two O's and two O's. And we're going to go ahead and erase that little thing there. This is our balanced equation. Remember, if this is method, if not written right there, we write a one, or we can just leave it blank. It really doesn't matter. Awesome. Whew. All right, let's try a little more challenging one. If you look at this one, you're like, holy smokes, this is aggressive. You're absolutely right, but it's actually going to be really pretty easy to balance. This is where we're going to get to letter C there. If a polyatomic ion stays together on both sides of the reaction, we're going to balance it as one um, item. So I'm going to start with calcium because that's the first thing I see. So I see calcium. One calcium, one calcium. Everybody agree with that. So our calciums are cool. I'm going to go back to the left here and work. NO3 stays in O3. And over here we have, on the reactant side, we have two NO3s. And on the product side, I have one. So I'm going to put a two out in front of that NO3 to give me two NO3s on the product side. And since we're right here, let's go ahead and do NA. I have two NAs now because of this, right? So over here, oh, look at that, I have two, NO, two NAs. Now to finish this off, let's check our sulfate. That's the only thing we haven't checked. SO4, one SO4, we are done. So this balance was fairly simple. We have ones all there and then a two in front of the NA, NO3. Awesome. Oh, let's try one more. All right, we're going to work this one together, even though I typically let you roll on your own. But this one we're going to work together because this gives us a little chance to double. So here we are. So if we look, we've got, oh, good, all C, H's, and O's. So we're going to start with C and then work our way to O. 
All right, so if we look here, I have two carbons on the reactant side and only one on the product side. So if I put a two out front, our C's, our carbons, are now good. If we go back and do H's next, we have six H's and two H's. What times two, what times, remember it's multiply, what times two, that'll be that. So we've got six H's now. Woohoo! Let's check our O's. Now all of our O's on the product side are going to be added up. So we have four O's right there, two times two, all right? And that's O's, four of them. And then we have plus these three O's right there. So we have seven O's overall or oxygen. How can we get seven? What times two gives me seven? Not really a whole number and all our coefficients right now for this part of our lives in chemistry need to be whole numbers. So we're going to have to go back and fix that. We are in trouble so we're going to double. So if we realize this right here is currently a one, right? Let's double that. That becomes a, let's even change our color here, we, that becomes a 2. When we double that 2, the 2 in front of CO2 becomes 4, right? Because we have 4 Cs, 4 Cs. This 3 then becomes a 6. Just keep doubling, just keep doubling. All right, now if we look at our O's, we have 8, and then we have 6. 8 plus 6 is now 14. What times 2 gives me 14? 7. Now let's just double check and make sure we can't go back and take a two or something out of all of these. Two, seven, four, six, there's no number that goes into all of those, so we are balanced. So a couple of things to remember before I close out. Number one, this is trial and error. You're just going to have to keep trying, all right? It takes practice, but you'll get better at it as long as you keep trying, all right? And last one, if you get in trouble, go ahead and double. All right, see you next time.